It's the Cool Kids Club. You've been invited to the Cool Kids Club. It's so exciting, yeah. Justin likes monsters, yeah. And Amy likes words in the Cool Kids Club. Cool, cool Kids Club. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to the Cool Kids Club, episode 21. We're getting crunk. Uh, oh, I'm, al- I'm already drunk. Actually. You're already drunk? Yes. Oh, my God. It's, it is, it's, four, you know, it's like 4.30. It's 4, it's 4 in the it's afternoon. It's not even 4.30. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not, but I'm legally able to now. It is true. We are both. 21 episodes. So it's yes. really the Cool Adults Club now mm. actually well that's an excellent point yeah wow, we're never gonna have to change all the stuff we oh already got my all the... god it's a whole thing uh, hey it's a new year too it is a new year um, our first episode of 2022 n- happy new year happy we hope new you had year. a great holiday season yes absolutely it was how is how was your holiday season how's 2022 been for you so far you know it's been really good because i've done almost nothing uh yeah. well unless you count all the tv and movies that i have been watching oh okay, um, which yeah. is a lot and i actually so went you had you had kind of you had like a staycation right i had a staycation i had some extra time off work um justin and i both work for a university so we we get that sweet university schedule um mm-hmm. at the holidays but then i also had some extra time off um so yeah i i made the most of it especially post new year's you know, everyone else had kind of gone back to work and I hadn't. So I was like, well, what do you do? You, uh, you watch movies and TV that you missed in the last year. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. It's cold. We've got a lot of snow. Mm-hmm. The, actually. Yeah, we've got uh, some uh, snow. Uh, well, some I mean, snow, just bad weather. A lot bad for, weather, a lot for so Tennessee. So it's been a good time to, yeah. good time to stay in. Yes. And binge stuff. Have you, what did you do? What, over About your break? About the same. Yeah. Honestly, I didn't have as long, uh, uh, as much time off as you did, but I still had a lot of time. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, we had kind of planned, you know, various things like, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to do this. Uh-huh. None of them sort of materialized for various reasons, right. including, you know, pandemic yeah. and yeah. all kinds, you know, the life stuff that happens. Sure. So I just kind of had a staycation as well, um, you know, with the exception of an Ikea trip, which was like a day trip. Oh, yeah. Um, we don't live. We, we live three and a half hours from the nearest Ikea. It's a, it's a way. So it's a, an it's a little day trip. It's not that far. It's no, not that it's far. It's not a bad drive. It's like two and a half, three hours. Yeah, it's it's worth it for uh, for IKEA for for meatballs. Yes, yes. The meatballs. I ate meatballs and bought some bookshelves. Did you so. did you buy the bag of meatballs <clears throat> you can bring home? You know how you can buy. I didn't. Uh, oh man, I remember the last time I ate at IKEA. It was pre pandemic because I did go to IKEA once during the pandemic, but they had the the dining area closed. So the only time I ever ate there, I of course had the meatballs. And then they had this like cake, and it had like a toffee crunch layer on it. And I still think about that. Yes, cake. it's the uh, it's it's, it's it? like an almond cake. Yes. Okay. So they yeah. had it. No, we we had that as well. It's so oh good. my <laughs> god, it's so okay. I wasn't sure if they like rotated their desserts out or what, but yeah, very good. I'm sure those listeners who have eaten in an IKEA know what we're talking about. Sure, and I mean sure. you know also lots of cool furniture and things. All the but... all the food was great. Yeah, um, yeah. So that that's about it. Other yeah. than other than that, just kind of a staycation. Watched a lot of stuff mm-hmm. as well, and uh, yeah, got some got my bookshelves put together. Yes. that sort of thing. Yes, you know. Justin's so finally he's a Billy boy now. He's got. Billy. I'm a Billy boy. I'm a, I got some Billies. I'm a Billy girl. I've got mm-hmm. those for my uh, for my. I'm a books. Billy boy in a Billy world. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, but yeah. today. On the show, our first episode of 2022. So it's shockingly not is, about IKEA. Uh, <laughs> you would, you, you would, would think, I mean, one would think. Don't worry, our meatball episode is coming yeah. soon. <laughs> Just on uh, various meatballs of the 90s. <laughs> our top ten meatballs top of the 90s. 10 meatballs. <laughs> but no, today I could, I could definitely do that. Yeah, I could definitely yeah, come up. One hundred percent. Today we're talking about <clears throat> honestly, just like. An absolute. It's weird, timing today. it's weird timing. It is weird timing. It's weird timing. But we've had this. We've had this planned as an episode for months and months. Yes, right? we have. And I and I still feel I still feel good about uh, this episode, and I'm still really pumped for this episode. Uh, today we're talking about TGIF, um, which oh, of course yes. was the classic ABC programming block on Friday nights uh, all throughout the '90s. Um, and it is weird timing because yesterday, last night, we found out that Bob Saget passed away, um, yeah. who was, of course, the patriarch um, 
of the of America. Of America. Uh, not just because of Full House, but also America's Funniest Home Videos. America's Funniest Home Videos. Um, so I feel like if you, even if you didn't watch Full House, I bet your family watched America's Funniest Home Videos. So. Oh my gosh! Um, you know, he was such a just a staple. Yeah. Of of our childhood, and, yeah. and even going beyond that, mm-hmm. I mean, I was never a particularly big fan of Full House, and right. we'll talk about that. You you were certainly. I was. Are. Yeah. Um. But but I watched a lot of it because it was on all the time. Sure. Oh yeah, and, it was always on. Yeah, and I, I always watched America's Funniest Home Videos. So it yeah. was like Bob Saget was always on TV in my house as a kid. Yeah. And then you know even as you got older, like you know and started you know when it kind of <laughs> you know I remember kind of getting to the age where you find out that Danny Tanner is like, like the, the complete guy opposite. Danny Tanner yeah. has like a really hilarious raunchy stand-up. Yeah, routine his comedy that's was very, very adult. Unfull house. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, and then, you know, he had a like, just a legendary Comedy Central roast yeah. that is just one of the best ones I think they ever did, in yeah. my opinion. And and directed, you know, what, what directed what, what I think is one of the most underrated comedies of all time, uh, Dirty Work, starring the also recently... I did not know he uh, directed that. ...deceased uh, Norm no, MacDonald, yes. I had no idea he directed that. Is he in it uh, as well? At all? Uh, I don't Like maybe a cameo so. or something? Do you know that I don't think I have seen Dirty Work in... I don't know that I've ever seen it all in one sitting or all at, like, one time. Oh, that's a shame. We need to watch Dirty yeah. Work. Yeah. I definitely Dirty have Work's seen parts great. of it. Also, his classic his classic uh, role in Half-Baked. I've never seen Half-Baked. Okay. Well, if you want to if you want to see Danny Danny Tanner talk about sucking dick for Coke... Oh, well... You, you'll... You'll want to you'll want to pull up Half Baked, oh. another classic. Uh, and also, the only funny part of that Dumb and Dumber sequel. Oh my god! With can the you, shit can you put all a over clip, the wall. Can you put a clip? Of course I will. R- right here. There's shit everywhere. Damn it! There's shit on the windows. Oh my god! My house is full of shit. He shit everywhere. Yeah. The, the only the, funny the, part. The of that only movie. the only funny bit. I remember um, watching that in the theater, and that was the only time. And it I, got me so good. It was the only time I remember laughing, but I laughed a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was so good and so funny, and 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 I love when, you know, I, I say love. Mm-hmm. That, that's that's a, that's a weird way to put it, but it's always so nice to see when these when when people pass away, who have had such a positive impact on people around them, and you see all uh-huh. the outpouring of support. Right. You know, from you the just people see, who like, really knew him. Yes, you know, um, and, and and just so many people coming out and talking about what a good person he was, yeah. and how funny he was, and how talented he was, and how and how much loss. he took care of the people around him and really cared for them, and yes, you know, and like, there was a lot like of a genuinely good person. Yeah, and I think there was a lot life. of of Danny Tanner in him in the sense that you know I think that. He, you know, he certainly wasn't this like, oh golly shucks, you know, kind of guy. But right, not the the corniness. Necessarily. But you know, he from the people that knew him best, I think it sounds like he was really, you know, caring and and kind and all those things that I think we liked about. Danny it's a Tanner. big, it's a it's a big loss. Yeah. It's a big loss and, and very and young. I think to lose someone way too young, way too young. So um, so this episode so yeah, it, is for for Bob Saget. I think for Bob, it is for, for Bob. Bob, and I think for sure. uh, maybe tonight we should watch something with Bob Saget. I uh, think let's watch Dirty Work. <laughs> okay, yeah, let's I watch Dirty Work. Watch Dirty Work. I had no idea. He I can that. always so watch funny. Dirty Work. I can always watch Dirty Work. Here's the thing: is I know like three people maybe in my real life who remember and love Dirty Work, mm-hmm. and they all love it just as much as I do. Yeah. Like there, there, there's no one that I know who's like, yeah, Dirty Work's okay. It's that either was, like you've never seen it or you hate it or it's the funniest thing ever. That was one of those movies I feel like that just like I mean, did very poorly and was just kind of regarded as just like a throwaway comedy that oh, has yeah. gotten just this like it devoted cult a, following of yes. people who realize how one of Chris Farley's last movies funny it is. Yes, G Seven. That's what I I can remember that scene. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the bar fight. Yeah. Well, do you want to get on into talking about TJ? TJ. T, TJ. TJ. Or, TG Max. TJ. Uh, <laughs> thank God it's Max. <laughs> thank, thank God it's Max. TGIF. Thank um, God it's Max. 
I remember, <laughs> so a couple months ago, because you and I are huge nerds and love to plan oh, and yeah. plan ahead, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, especially with this particular project we're well, working you gotta, on, you gotta. Uh, we were like, okay, we're going to take a little break around the holidays, sure. maybe have an extra week or two off, mm -hmm. and we're going to come back. But we got to come back strong. Like, yeah. we can't have just any topic. Right. Like, just it can't just old... be anything. It's got to be something big. It's got to be something strong. Mm -hmm. It's got to be something that everyone remembers. It's got to be... It's got to be Garfield phoned, washing up on shore level of epic. Um, that needs to be a sticker, maybe. <laughs> it does need to be a sticker. Cool kids calling. Just, <laughs> just big old Garfield googly eyes. Just, just a Garfield phone in the sand with like foamy waves around <laughs> yeah. it and like a crab on its head. Yeah. And it can just say like, cool kids calling. Yeah. Maybe that's our that's our um, letting you pick know that the, there will be the there will be merch. This is a tease. We're gonna have some merch oh, later it, this year. It is a tease. Yes, we're 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 uh, we're kind of we're, we're in the very beginning building, stages. Yeah, expanding. But yes, there is. That's just to get coming. you excited. Yes, that's just to <laughs> just a taste. Um, just a taste, but no, let's listen, listen, TGIF. That, yeah. that was, I remember you said that when we were trying to figure out what topic should we come back with? What should be the first episode of the year? And you said that and it was like, perfect. Cause I think we were talking about, you know, how like, well, we started with the Burger King kids club, I think because it was sort of where we got our name. It was kind of the thing we thought of, yes. but then our second episode was Snick because we thought we got to yes. start out with some heavy hitters. Um, to gain, you know, listenership and, and appeal. And, and heavy so, hitters apparently are programming television programming blocks. well i mean i think you ask anybody and other, than, other than snick T tgif for me is the other that's it hitter. exactly i think if that's you ask it, right? anybody born between 1985 and 2000 or yeah. earlier even in the in the early like, 90s you know i, mean, you know, I was a little kid so I, it wasn't like i was exactly out on the town but if i was at home watching tv oh, yeah on friday nights it was tgif yeah. and on saturday nights it was snick yeah absolutely um, so yeah, so, so TGIF is, is another heavy hitter episode, I think for us, it's probably going to be a bit long. <laughs> um, and we're going to kind of, I think, come at it the same way we did Snick. Um, the episodes, or I mean, the shows we're going to talk about in this episode can all, and probably will all have their own devoted episodes, sure, um, sure. later on down the road. So we won't just, just like with Snick, just like with darn Snick, well, we're going to do. We're going to do an Are You Afraid of the Dark episode at some point. And an or Alex Clarissa Mack. or Alex Mack. Yeah. I know you want to do Alex Mack. You know, you know I do. And yeah, all the shows that we're going to talk about here, I don't think there's a single one that I, I couldn't see us doing an episode yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go. We're not... Um, the development and stuff, I, I really just wanted to sort of get into talking about the shows. Because that's the, that's the fun that stuff. That is so we're the just fun gonna stuff. Because that's, that's what we remember. This is the shows. That's what we remember. Yeah, I mean, you know... We are first and foremost educators. It is true. So we do like to start out with true. some we history. Gotta, yeah, we gotta we gotta contextualize yeah, a little. Uh, give and us then, some context. You know, we'll get into the show. Well, you know, if you go all the way back to the fifties, the early days of television, uh, ABC, which is the network that TGIF yep. was on, mm -hmm. um, you know, they had a, sort of a history already. With they 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 were very successful with uh, family oriented comedies throughout yeah. the decades. I didn't realize all point. these were on ABC specifically. Yeah, so I have a little list here. Here's here's some examples of what I'm talking about mm -hmm. with, you know, go, going back to those early days of television, you had The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, which started in 1952. We're wow. way, way, way back. I don't think I ever watched that. Even, I mean, obviously. Even on Nick at Night. Yeah, Nick at Night, TV I Land. It. I think I, I missed that. Uh, Leave It to Beaver, oh, 1958. Watched, I definitely watched, definitely some, Leave watched some Leave It to Beaver. Definitely watched some Leave It to Beaver, yeah. Uh, Donna Reed Show, mm -hmm. 1958 as well. Yeah. Um, now that I, I don't remember specifically, but I remember that being on the early days of Nick at Night. Yes, yes, like the early days, and like um, TV Land and stuff. Actually, probably probably later on as well, a little bit. Yeah, and TV. It Land. wasn't a favorite of mine. Like I I used to really love watching TV right. Land and Nick at Night and stuff, but that one yes. wasn't one that I connected with. Here's like an the interesting beef. one that I think is um, it's an interesting inclusion: the Flintstones. Which, really? you know, I was reading about it, and until, like, the first season or two, the Flintstones was sort of... Like, it was prime geared, time? Geared, geared toward adults and was in prime time, yeah. Wow. And then became kind of more of a family comedy once they, like, had, like, Pebbles be born and all that. Um, Pebbles wasn't in the original, like... No, apparently not. Interesting. <clears throat> it Did really they actually have... kind of made me want to do a Flintstones episode so I could <sighs> learn about the early early history oh god can we do a flintstones, flintstones jetsons like 
Hanna, Hanna Barbera, yeah. In one episode? Yeah. Yes. Here's another one that I know you're that you loved yep. as a kid. 1969, uh, The Brady Bunch. Oh, I loved Mom and I just liked hate watching The Brady Bunch because it was so <laughs> ridiculous. And, and see, I couldn't do I didn't get why you watched it just to complain about it the entire time like i guess i kind of get it now i mean i but like, i guess i, I didn't it, that's i never the thing really is, i don't bunch. i don't hate watch anything now i don't like right. that's not something that i enjoy doing and i think i we didn't realize we were doing it at the time it was something that upon reflection was like we don't really like this we're just watching it because it's kind of ridiculous it's fun um, to make fun of it. it's fun to make also, fun of also it also in the same vein the partridge family yeah watch some of that as well Come on, yeah, get happy. Yeah, also on Nick at Night. Yeah. Nick at Night. Nick at Night, I'm telling you. Um, so, I feel like, yeah. you know, kids kids nowadays, they don't these have... Kids. These kids. These youths. Uh, they youths. don't have... Uh, you know, their Nick at Night is, is like, fucking friends. Literally. Yeah. I so, like... Well, I mean, it's been... And I understand why. I get yeah, it. Yeah, because that show's, like, 30 years old. But just I'm like just... like, in the 90s, we were watching shows that were 30 years old. <laughs> That's the thing is, I think, like, I bet kids nowadays, like, they may be familiar with the concept of the Brady Bunch, or maybe they saw those movies or something, but, like, they don't probably know what the Partridge family, and I'm just like, oh, yeah, we were watching Leave it to Beaver and the I Partridge family. I feel like family. Brady Bunch is probably big enough of a cultural now, touchstone now that to where one maybe. you at least know what it is. Right. Partridge family, maybe not. Yeah. I, I don't think... I don't you don't, you think. don't hear a lot of Partridge family talk these no, days. No, you're not, uh, there's not a, it's not like The Office where all the kids are into it now. Right. What if all the kids just got really into the Partridge family? That would be a, 51 a twist that, years I would not, ago. that I would not see coming. I could see him doing it. <laughs> just because just Okay, what about some weird. of these shows? Because okay. we're going to move into the 80s because okay. that's obviously okay. when TGIF starts. Yeah. So we're looking at Friday Nights, yeah. which is at least nowadays and has been for a long time, kind of considered not a good not television. a good night because people go not out. not a good night for tv because people go out right. so you know when you hear of a show getting moved to friday night it's you'll hear a lot like, of, like oh that's the death slot yeah that's the you know that's the we're yep. putting this show in here to kill it yep basically, basically like it's tv graveyard um, yep but back in the 80s uh, before tgif uh-huh you know abc's friday night schedule consists you had webster i remember watching oh webster, yeah for sure benson that was one i don't think i ever saw i don't uh, yeah i wasn't crazy about and benson. uh and and different strokes uh which was an nbc show for years oh and then you had it moved to that nbc canceled it and abc picked it up interesting um for and actually that happens a couple times we're gonna talk about yeah here. it does you, you think of that more moves. i always kind of think of that more as a modern thing of like a show will get canceled and then you know we've had someone will come netflix, rescue it netflix will pick yeah, it up yeah. or something like that um but no it was, we just have it, so many that, more options of things that can pick it up now whereas it used to be if another right. network didn't get it it's over right you know now we have all these streaming platforms and websites and you know 500 television channels right the, <laughs> the world wide web <laughs> so uh, a man by the name of jim janicek Mm -hmm. uh, he was a this guy was a writer and a producer working for ABC and uh, TGIF was his brainchild. Oh, okay. Um, he kind of um, he got he was inspired by when he was a kid growing up and and he and his family you know would all get around the TV and watch the Wonderful World of Disney and it was oh, like yeah programming that was appropriate for the entire family that everyone could enjoy yeah and it was like kind of a weekend they would show movies a lot right on the Wonderful World of Disney it was like older yes. movies yeah. Family yeah. friendly stuff. So um, basically, he comes up with this idea of a Friday night television block, like mm -hmm. a like a prime time, a two hour prime time block mm -hmm. of family oriented comedies. Yeah, like new new sitcoms um, that all kind of have this theme, and they come up with the name of TGIF, which of course traditionally means mm -hmm. "Thank God It's Friday." Yeah, yep. Um, what did they for, call for, it? Thank goodness it's thank funny. Thank goodness it's funny. Well, we're we're <laughs> ABC removing God from yeah from television, I guess. <laughs> but also, you know, thank goodness. How it's did funny. the church not come for them? Uh, the church. The church. Um. So the block. So so we're up. We're up into like 1988 now. Okay. And um, ABC's got a couple, you know, hits on their hands, and the they start this 
block of programming on Friday nights without actually having a name for it yet. It's not TGIF yet. Uh-huh. It's not being marketed as such. It's not being marketed as like this is a block of programming. Uh huh. They just kind of um, they were putting their eggs in that basket. Yeah, but by that 1988 uh, television season, um, you had the four shows mm-hmm. that they would start out with that would eventually, in the very near future, as we'll see, be called TGIF. Mm-hmm. Um, those shows consisted of uh, three shows that were already they were already on Friday nights. Okay. So, so you had Perfect Strangers, which debuted Loved in Perfect Strangers. Yes. Um, Perfect. Str- I have so much love for Perfect Strangers. Me too. Um, Full House. Yep. Uh, which had debuted in '87. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then uh, Mr. Belvedere. Okay. Yeah, I remember that one. Which was, I think, kind of on its way out at that point. Yeah. You know, it was in its... That had been on mo- you know, more in the That 80s. had been on for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then a spinoff of Growing Pains called Just the Ten of Us. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, which, and that would actually that. run for a couple seasons. Had Growing Pains ended by that point? Yes, I believe so. Okay. And I'm guessing that was an ABC show? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I used to watch Growing Pains a lot in syndication. I remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's where I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Um... So they they'd already kind of been doing some of this like before they started calling it. They just it didn't TGIF brand it. It was just kind of was they didn't like... brand it as such with the idea of this is the kind of programming right. that we are going for. It's called this. But even going back to the 1987 TV season, um, the two stars of Perfect Strangers, mm-hmm. Mark Lynn Baker mm-hmm. and Bronson Pinchon. Pinchon. Mm-hmm. Bronson Pinchon as Balky, <laughs> Larry and Balky. Um, they've been doing these like intercycle things, right, where they would pop in, oh. kind of. Uh, like commercial break like as you're going to commercial or something gotcha. for like 15 20 seconds oh, okay and tell a little joke and like oh we're coming you know and they would like kind of host oh i was gonna say almost like they're hosting it almost like they're hosting the evening they would just kind of pop in for a little joke here gotcha. and there and then like between shows yeah they would talk about what's going on on the shows oh um, fun okay yeah um so september 22nd 1989 that is when the tgif branding Began. So this is so, the beginning of the 1989. So really, TGIF day. was going on, and some of these shows had been on for like three years at this point. Yeah, it, they just um, weren't calling it that. They weren't calling it TGIF. Now, but in 1989, let that's me ask when it one thing. Yeah. Um, so I know that the whole th- NBC Thursday night, I know must see TV was something that was coined later into the 90s. Uh-huh. But before they called it Must See TV, was NBC still curating, like, was Thursday night kind of their thing this early or not until, because they had Seinfeld. I think so. I mean, I didn't I didn't do research into that, but I think so because... They had Seinfeld already. Well, Seinfeld didn't come around till later. Well, around this time, I was gonna, actually. Well, I that's what I'm saying is, is Seinfeld... like 89. So I'm wondering... But, but NBC already had big comedy hits on that night. They had namely Cheers. Cheers. Cheers and The Cosby Show. That's right. Okay. Um, which, and they kind of like, that's why like in the early Seinfeld season, Seinfeld was kind of like the lead in for Cheers. Yeah. Or it would come on afterward because they were trying to use Cheers to, yeah, to gain bolster. an audience. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because it was already a huge so hit. So they did have a third, they, they kind of had Thursday Night on Lock, which is NBC why. NBC sort of had Thursday Night on Lock and would continue to through, through the, the 90s, 90s with. Seinfeld, Friends, Friends Frasier, and those yeah. shows. Yeah. Um, okay, that's so what... So Friday nights are wide open. Right. And not that um, not that Cheers and all those shows weren't... Well, they weren't really family-friendly. They were for adults. They're prime time, so yeah. they're not particularly raunchy or anything. But, you know, Cheers is... Cosby a, Show probably more. Cosby Show definitely more, more family. More family-oriented. But I mean, I'm sure Cheers was a little later on in the evening but like cheers is like 10 year olds don't care about cheers you know so oh, no. tgif was it would they were it was all family programming right yeah, so again, i think that it was that the wonderful concept. world of disney yeah. idea of the kids will enjoy this the adults will enjoy right. this if the parents can't um, go out at night and the family's all home together what right. are you gonna watch you've got all these family shows or you know you could leave the kids at home and they could they could have something to watch that you would feel okay about you know because you right. know that it's not going to be too adult for them. Yes. Something you can all watch together. So the original TGIF lineup. Yeah. Now, what I've learned in, in researching this is that they really just could not get a fourth show to stick. Uh, like, that, like ever. Um, that's a like problem. They would have, like, like, at any point, they would have, like, 
three successful shows and then and like then a just constantly cycling, rotating yeah. either a constantly rotating fourth one that was always getting canceled or they would just do another episode of Full House or Perfect Strangers like a rerun yes okay yeah yeah because yeah. and it was always the last show of the night yeah yeah you know so the official and, and we're starting here with the original lineup so the yeah. original TGI branded TGIF was Full House Family mm-hmm. Matters which was a new show and a spinoff of Perfect Strangers. I always forget that's a spinoff of Perfect Strangers. Yep. And so Family Matters is the first show to debut as, as part of TGIF. TGIF because I it, love it, Family this Matters. is when it debuts. Full House had already been on the air for like two or three seasons. Perfect Strangers had been on the air even longer. Family Matters is brand new. Yeah. And a spinoff of Perfect Strangers. And then in the fourth show, we get uh, a show called Free Spirit. I don't even know um, what that is. It was about a witch. And it ran for like ten or... 12 episodes or something interesting uh, oh don't worry kind of we're us. gonna have a much more successful witch show later on right <laughs> yeah the the first try with witches didn't go no, as well the as second, the second one the, much better yeah um and then you know what let's just let's dive into talking about these because this is what i want to talk about all right let's I don't start talk, i don't want to talk about stats and and all this stuff i want to talk about the shows and i think there's no better place for you amy hopefully yeah, uh-huh. to start us um, then the first show on the first lineup, which is Full House. I have been to those houses in San Francisco. Have you really? This, uh, the Six Sisters. The Full House? The Full the House. Titular full the houses? titular Full Houses. <laughs> um, yeah, they call them the Six Sisters. It's six houses, you know, and they're oh, all. Oh, okay. Um, and I've been to that, like, hill. Are they named after the sisters from Full House? <laughs> yeah, one of them is DJ. All, I feel like there are a lot of them. Were there six? <laughs> nope, there's only three. Mary-Kate, Ashley. Well, that's not fair, because they're only play- they're playing one character. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. One of them's the DJ house, um, but no, it's like uh, uh, there's a park across, you know, where the credits end, and it's like them having the picnic, and you see the houses in the background. I've sat right on that hill um, where the six That's sisters fun. are. Which, yeah, where where Danny Tanner himself has sat. Um, I really oh, liked Dan Full Tan. House. Dan Tan. I really yeah, love. I want Full you house. to talk about Full House because, frankly, I was never a huge fan. Yeah. I've watched a lot of it. Well, I don't. But think you're a Full House head. I like Full House a lot, um, and still like to put on an episode now and then. Uh, it is v corny. It is very G rated family sitcom. You know, they would occasionally have like a very special episode, um, something like that. You know, very. But but it's it is very very family oriented. Um, of course, the whole concept is you've got Danny Tanner, who is this uh, sports anchor in San Francisco, and his wife dies shortly after um, their third daughter is born. And so he asks uh, his brother-in-law, Jesse Katsopoulos, and uh, his best friend, Joey, to like move in and help him raise these girls. So it kind of is this this uh sort of a different kind of blended family not not your typical like brady bunch like you know families coming together but you know you've got these two uncles uh right. living there with them helping helping him so it's a bit of like a three men and a baby but there's three babies three men and many babies and three men and, and women. three <laughs> and three kids yeah um and also women and also aunt becky comes in and in aunt season, becky season two yeah um so yeah, I I love it, and I think that you know I was, so I am like what I'm six months younger than the Olsen twins, okay, in real life. So okay. when I'm watching this show, so their antics were right up your alley, so, exactly. So <laughs> and also like really loved Stephanie and DJ. 
Um, so yeah, I don't think like you that's know, who you aspired to be. I aspired to be like I you wasn't, were the Olsen twins, yeah. but you aspired to be a Stephanie or DJ. Stephanie and, and DJ. Yeah, exactly. Um, I was very into the Full House Stephanie books. Um, uh-huh. I had a couple, and I used to get them from the library all the time. I've definitely, oh, yeah. I have definitely bought a few. Um, okay, and would love to have all those at some point. Loved those a lot. So Do so it. Stephanie was like, you know, two years older than me. So I felt very like, you know. Um, they did have Full House Michelle books. But again, we'll talk about that in our Full House episode. Coming in 2028. <laughs> um, coming in probably 2022. Uh, it's possible. Maybe. Maybe. We uh, did like three Garfield episodes <laughs> is, last year. Is this going to so be maybe. the year of Full House where we accidentally oh, do God. three Full House oh. episodes? I, can't, I don't have three full house episodes <laughs> in me. I just don't. Well, so this ran, like you said, it started um, in September of 87. and um, So when TGIF rolls along, this it's is already been on for two third years. season. And, yeah. and it, was, it was very popular for ABC. Um, it sure. was not critically acclaimed uh, because right. it is. It's very corny, you know. But it's yeah. feel good. Yeah. Um, it's 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 good for the family. I think that's why it was in the eight o'clock slot because it's especially G rated. Do you know yes. what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. there's not yeah. a lot. I mean, there's a little bit of peril. There's basically but like any age. Case any can age watch can watch it exactly. Um, a lot of like on the nose life lessons. A lot of like heart to right, heart right. talks and stuff like that. Um, you know, just these guys. Just corny, general how, corniness. General corniness, but you know. There's Uncle nothing wrong Joey. with that. Uncle Joey, God, he was so annoying. Oh my God, I could just, I could cut him out da- of that whole show. Dave Acuye, nothing against him personally. No, just that character. Um, I want, J- yeah. I don't think Justin got my joke, but when I just said cut him out, I did the Uncle Joey cut it out that he used to do all the time, and I don't think Justin's seen enough of Full House to know that that's nope. a thing, Didn't but I it. wanted to tell you guys that I did it, because I know right you over all my head. appreciate it. Um... Yeah, uh, if we could get rid of him entirely and just replace him with a second John Stamos, um, <laughs> who was, I think, everyone's sexual awakening in, like, 1990, was like, oh. That's true, yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so he was like a modern-day Elvis. <laughs> and he hasn't aged, like, at all. He truly looks so He is one of those great. weird witch people, like Paul Rudd, who looks exactly the same. And you can tell, like, it's not like he's getting work done. He just has great genes. He's just, he just a naturally very great-looking person. Yep. <laughs> and, I mean, yes, there. Listen, look, look, there is a degree of, like, yeah, he's a rich person. He's got I'm sure he's dietitians and personal trainers and all that, He too. probably puts diamonds sure on his done. face when he goes to bed. I mean, I'm sure he's got great skincare, you know, like, but... I also think part of that is just like he's just got good Listen, genes. If I had all that stuff too. I still wouldn't look as good as as John Stamos. No, there's because... just you know there's only so much makeup you can put on pee. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> um, the point of this episode is that John Stamos is a dilf. Um, so loved Full House. Um, this of course launched the I don't even think the term wildly successful. Is I think that's underselling it. The careers of Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. Uh, Justin, when I tell you that those two little girls had fucking a (laughs) chokehold on the 90, from the, from 87, no, because they were just babies. Let's say from like 92 to 2005. An absolute Uh fucking chokehold on every girl and probably gay boy in. (laughs) America, in the world, they were everywhere. They were not just oh, yeah. on Full House. They had the adventures. No, that was where it started. Oh, that was just the beginning for them. Uh, they, you know, they had the Adventures of Mary Kate and Ashley. They had movies. They had shows. They had book series. They, I mean, my God. And then they my got God. into fashion and other. I mean. So much. It's unbelievable. Uh, there will be a whole episode on it. Don't worry. But so this was the beginning. This was the very beginning. Because actually, so they were born. I just remember because it's in relation to me because we're like the same age. They were born in September of 86. So when the show started, you know, they were like a year old. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, their entire lives 
um, pretty much. But this started it. Um, and of course, there has been a spinoff called Fuller House, which came on in 2016. I tried to watch it, but it was just too corny for me. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> the first. Too I corny mean, for you? Yeah, I would give it a shot again. I'm not anti it. But um, <laughs> it started in 2016, ran for four years, I think. Uh, till 2020 and it follows dj as an adult who is living in the house um okay. and she loses her husband uh he's like a firefighter and he like dies in the line of duty and she is in a very similar situation so she asks mm-hmm. stephanie and fucking kimmy gibbler her best friend growing up who i couldn't uh. stand i kind of forgot about her she's the J- justin she's the joey of the show. Yeah. Oh, for sure. So she, they, was the jo- she was like she was, the other Joey of the original she, show. <laughs> <laughs> she was. I hated Kimmy. Um, I don't know how that family could tolerate also, her. What's her last name? Nibbler? Gibbler. <laughs> Gibbler? It's not much better. Who no. named her? Kimmy Gibbler. That's a horrible name. Of course she's going to be I'm annoying. Kimmy Gibbler. Hi, I'm Wally Lockett. I'm on Lolly Lockett. I want y'all to know how much we refer to Lolly Lockett in our real lives, because it's a lot. Yeah, we 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 have more conversations about Polly Pocket than we probably would like to admit. Yeah. Um, uh, hey, can I talk about? Um, uh, unless you have anything else. No, that's all I really. I just kind of wanted want to, to add... hit the high notes there on on Full House. Uh, I particularly loved Full House. Um, I still. We kind of the last couple years started doing this thing. It's, where uh, around the holidays, holidays being Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, it, not, yeah. not not the high the, la- the last the last quarter the of last the year. quarter of the year, start putting on like a Halloween episode of an old show or a Christmas episode, and I love doing. I that. do too. I love it so love much, it. and uh, definitely have watched some Full House in the last couple of years. And yeah, it's corny. I, pur- I purchased some Home Improvement Halloween episodes. Worth every penny. Oh, for sure. Home of Improvement They're was great. an ABC show, wasn't it? Yes, I think so. But it wasn't. It was never a TGIF show. No, no. That's very. That's shocking. That. <laughs> well, I mean, that just shocking. seems like classic, like family. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Um. No, I think I think it was. Uh, I don't know what night Home Improvement was on. Actually. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Well, yeah. If you want, you want to head us into our next one. So this so th- this show was really my my introduction to TGIF, yes. frankly, and I, I I loved it. And it's actually the earliest show, or uh, it, it's the show that debuted the earliest yes. to be part of TGIF, yes. and that's Perfect Strangers. So Perfect Strangers debuted in March of uh, 1986. Wow! So it, it's it had been on for several years. Yeah. Um. Before, but it was it like moved. it was it was a very very popular show for them. It was a very popular show. Yeah. Um, and they had kind of shuffled it around the schedule a little, and they had like moved it to mm-hmm. Saturdays at one point, and the ratings dropped, and then they moved it back, and the ratings went back up, and because Saturday um, is even more the death yeah. knell for TV, yeah. Right. So Perfect Strangers is like, uh, if you've never seen it, um, it's like an odd couple type of show yes. and sort of mm-hmm. like uh, combined with like a fish out of water mm-hmm. type of thing. So you have this, uh, you know, the, the straight man uh, whose name is Larry Appleton, yep. played by uh, Mark Lynn Baker, uh-huh. um, who is a photographer. In absolutely Chicago. no lips. This man has no lips. I re- can remember mom always <laughs> saying that he has absolutely the thinnest lips. And that is what I think of when I think of Larry Appleton, by the way. Okay. Just, well, I, think, I never noticed his lips. I think of you. the the um, the lack of lips that the man has. That's what I think Right. Of. Okay. Mm-hmm. Continue, uh, please. Th- <laughs> <laughs> so you have Thin Lip Larry. Yeah. Uh, who is a photographer mm-hmm. in Chicago. 
Um, and his uh, he basically is contacted by his uh, distant cousin uh, by the name of Balky Bartokomus? Bart- 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 Bartokomus? I can't Balky remember. Bart- Bart- it's Balky. Bart- Bartokomus. It's Balky. Yeah. Uh, played by Bronson Pinchon. Bronson Pinchon, who is wonderful uh, in everything, by the way. Yeah. And uh, actually, first, um, he, he got this role initially um, because of the attention that he had garnered in um, the first Beverly Hills Cop movie. I was going to say, now, I have never seen that movie all the way through. Uh. I but I do Beverly remember that. You've never being, seen all of Beverly Hills Cop? I've only seen like the first little bit. And it was probably on TV, so I wasn't seeing much. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's kind of an odd couple, fish out of water yeah. type thing. Uh, Balky is supposed to be from a fictional Mediterranean uh-huh. island mm-hmm. called Mypos. Yep. Um, so, you know, he has this like very, very thick Mediterranean mm-hmm. Slash Eastern European accent, yeah. and it's just kind of like the culture. Oh yeah, you know he's coming to you know, Chicago. I think for fish the first out of water. Time, yeah, he lives this very uh, rural lifestyle yeah. in this tiny little island country, and now he's coming to the big city. Yeah, um, and uh, and and comes and stays and lives with Larry, and they get into uh, all kinds of just adventures, shenanigans. So uh, many. So yeah, it, it debuted um, actually between two huge shows. Um, which I think contributed to its betwixt, betwixt two huge shows. Yeah, that I think contributed to its uh, early success because mm-hmm. it was a it was a big hit even when it debuted. Like at the because yeah. it debuted between Who's the Boss and Moonlighting. Oh damn! Which were like two of the biggest shows. Yeah. at the time they just sandwiched that right in between there. So you, yep. I feel like that eight thirty slot is so good because you can start off with a with a banger, which you can see is what they're doing for Family Matters, a new show. They put it in right. between Full House and Perfect Strangers. Because, yes. like, you're probably not going to turn off and change between two shows you want to watch. You're just going to leave it going and check it out. Right. Yeah. Now, And that's right. why they couldn't get anything to stick at 930 because everybody's like, ow, oh, this show doesn't look very good. And then they'll everybody's change out. it. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll just, like, go do something until the news comes on or something. Right. Yeah. Well, and traditionally, like, the 10 o'clock slot is still prime time, but usually that's reserved for, like, a drama or... right. Like a kind of like like a like a news like a journal type of mm-hmm. like twenty twenty or yeah Dateline or sixty minutes something like or, that. or or a drama like yeah. an hour long drama like, like ER an ER. was on it to, yeah 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 yes that's yes we yeah. both thought of ER of course we yes, yes. so yeah. Uh, yeah so halfway through the third season in March of ninety eight it was moved from Wednesday to Friday and that was basically to anchor TGIF yeah because they're like um, we... because it was such a success yeah. and Full House was a success. That and by that point, like, who's the boss was off or leaving soon? Yeah, I mean they were yeah. losing some of their bigger shows. Yes, and they kind had of this these older like, generation of shows mm-hmm. is sort of ending, mm-hmm. and now you're having the new sort of crop of shows sort of take their place. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but honestly, by the time TGIF came around, Perfect Strangers was already a big hit. Oh yeah, and it was part of and it was part of TGIF as well as Full House because it was already a big hit. Right. And, and they're like, they well, here's a good place to. Viewers put some new shows and just like they did with perfect strangers when they put it with who's the boss and uh moonlighting exactly to us to established hits um so yeah it we also get um in perfect strangers Mm -hmm. the character of harriet winslow who uh that's right who plays uh who is a major character uh like later on she is like a main cast member and plays uh the elevator operator in the uh, newspaper building where Larry works as a oh, photographer. Oh, okay. I couldn't remember how she was brought in. Yes. Um, so, and, and her husband, Carl. Uh-huh. Um, who's a police officer. Who is a police officer, is introduced in Perfect Strangers. He's only in one episode. But that character gets introduced there as her husband, obviously. Interesting. Same um, actor. And yet, so, yeah, yeah, same actor. Yeah. Same, for both. For both. Yeah. Um... And, so, and that character had just become so popular yeah. that they um, they sort of... Uh, Made a whole show. They, they decided she was uh, worthy of, of carrying her own show. Love and, that. Yeah. Um, so they initially... Family Matters um, debuts in September of 89. 
It's a rare condition this day and age to read any good news on the newspaper page. Love and tradition of the grand design. Some people say it's even harder to find. Well, then there must be some magic clue inside these gentle walls. Cause all I see is a tower of dreams. Real love bursting out of every scene. Smother the blues with tenderness There's room for you, room for me For gentle hearts and opportunity It's the bigger love of the family So it's like I said, it debuts with the TGIF mm-hmm. brand. The only, well, the first show to debut. Well, no, the yeah. only because they'd already started just the ten of us, hadn't they? Well, the only sh- of the original lineup. The, the original show to lineup, de- yeah. Debut, yeah. Yes, nine seasons this ran for. It ran until oh, nineteen ninety eight. That's not. That can't be right. <laughs> it is true. Two hundred and fifty episodes. Holy so, shit! So obviously, it starts off as a family comedy Uh about Carl and Harriet Winslow and their kids Mm -hmm. and you know her mother who's living with you know mother Winslow yeah and then is it her sister or his sister's Aunt Rachel lives with them too or lives nearby with her son yes one of their sisters yeah so the ratings in this first season are steady they're good Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and then halfway through the first season they introduce Steve Urkel (laughs) It really Tell becomes us. an Urkel fest after that. Tell me about Steve Urkel. What are your what are your Urkel thoughts and feelings? Because yeah, after this, uh, the show became a huge hit, and it became the Steve Urkel show. Yeah. By the second season, it was the Steve Urkel show. Yeah. So, I mean, I wa- we watched a lot of Family Matters when it was on, um, mm-hmm. and I've watched a lot in syndication and stuff. I love Family Matters. Um, I don't remember a time when it wasn't the Urkel show. You know what I mean? Like it just. Well, it, it, it wasn't. It, it, it wasn't, wasn't, there wasn't long. very much. Yeah. So, um, I kind of just always accepted it as that, but I don't think that I really realized until I was an adult, maybe talking about it or watching it, that I realized like by the end of the show, like I mean that's. The other characters had such little, like, development and screen time because it was oh, so yeah. about him. Um, well, and I was actually, I was looking at the different, I watched a couple different opening credits. Oh, yeah. And, uh, like, the early seasons compared to the later seasons, mm-hmm. it's just ridiculous. Like, the later seasons is, like, Urkel in space. And, like, and yeah. you don't watch the, these early seasons, and it's a family comedy. It's a very about a normal, working, yeah. a working class family in Chicago, an African American family. Yeah, you know, and and we have, you know, there's a tradition of of some great, um, Af- predominantly African American family comedies, right? You know, different Strokes and the Jeffersons and Cosby and Cosby. Yeah, um, but yeah, um, ugh, it got so ridiculous. <laughs> It got so ridiculous. And I can't imagine that the people playing the Winslows, the actors playing the Winslows, weren't just like... I mean, I'm sure that they all I'm had sure a great relationship. I'm sure they were making banks, I'm so sure, they were probably well, good I'm, with it. Yeah, I guess so. But I just imagine being like, God, this show really is just all about him now, isn't it? Um, yes, he had his own cereal and dolls. and. Yeah, I mean, it was... a Yeah. And you know what? Maybe not Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen uh, level of long- longevity. Well, yeah, he didn't. Have was a- Urkel the male, uh, <laughs> the male equivalent? What would be his the- counterpart, like, or his 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 second in command? You know, you had Mary Kate and Ashley. So, uh, well, Stefan Urkel. Oh God, I walked right into that. <laughs> I walked right into it, forgetting about Stefan Urkel. How do you forget about uh, Stefan Urkel? I'm I've, surprised you're not still in love with him. Still, I don't think he's, ever. He 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 could he could. I don't really know. 
<laughs> I don't want to know what he could do. Well, I just assumed all women were in love with Stefan or Kelly. Am I wrong? Am I wrong about that? Um, I was too busy being in love with Jesse Katsopoulos in the early '90s. So, yeah, I think uh, you are wrong. Okay, about right. that one. Well, um, let us know. Let us know if you lusted for Stefan or Kel. or Urkel, or Steve Urkel. Or just you Steve know? Urkel. I mean, I mean, nerdy is very nerdy's mainstream now. It is. It certainly wasn't then. It was not then. No. no. Um, but yeah, I I really liked Family Matters though. I really liked it. I and did I too. Think those, especially the especially the early I was seasons. Say, I, re- I really did. Like most nine season long shows, probably the first five or six are going to be the best, and then it starts to get you know like uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't watched it in a long time yeah. outside of some random Christmas and Halloween episodes yeah. here and there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, 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 it goes to some really really ridiculous places. Oh yeah. And uh, became actually the longest running. Or the second, I'm sorry, the second longest running mm-hmm. live action sitcom with a predominantly African American cast. Really? Um, after the Jeffersons. God, um, was the Jeffersons so, on longer than nine years? Mm hmm. I don't know how many, but. Whoa. Yes. Let's see. The Jeffersons. We got to Google something live while we record, or else it just wouldn't be a cool kids' club. The podcast. Jeffersons was on for 11 seasons. What? Yes. That is crazy. Now, the Jeffersons was a spinoff of All in the Family. Is that right? Or vice versa? Yeah, the Jeffersons, I believe, was a spinoff. Was of a spinoff of. Okay, okay. Yes. Wow. Well, what are you? But th- yeah, what are your um, thoughts on Urkel? The Urkelization of Family Matters. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I I, I like Urkel. I sure. think it's a funny. Ca- I think he's a funny character, mm-hmm. and it's a it's a really solid comedic performance. Mm-hmm. I just didn't like it once it became all about him. Yeah. And plus, he's pretty creepy. Uh, like yes, the, the, with uh, with uh, Laura. Yes, um, he's you know he's a little stalkery. Yes, he, well, he's pretty. He's very. He's stalkery. very stalkery. Yeah, he um, does some but, things that would not fly in the year twenty twenty two on but, TV. But, but that aside, yeah. you know, I, I thought he was he's a funny character and he yeah. was good at that. Yeah, um, he was good at playing that character. Sure, I just didn't like when it became all about him. I feel like a character like that is good in smaller doses. Yes. Um, he would have been better if becomes... he'd just been peppered in, but he just became so popular that they just and what were, were they like, going to? Yeah, I mean they, they were just like, all they... right, let's give him more screen time and more screen time. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I, I can I can take some Urkel. Yeah. But, uh, you know, by the time he's going to space and doing all this ridiculous <laughs> stuff, it doesn't really hold up for no, me. No, not much exactly. Anymore. But I like Family Matters, like I said, particularly the early seasons. Now anyway. talking about holding up. This is a show that I would really like to watch again and see. Nope, the show I'm about to talk about. Oh, oh, we're moving on. Well, do you have any more fa- any no, matters? I, nope. I mean, any family nope. matters you would like to discuss? <laughs> no, I've addressed all my family matters. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to do a smooth transition into the next one, but oh, and we I just, just fucked we it up. Mucked it, mucked it all up. Um, that is what I do. <laughs> well. I do want to watch this show again. Maybe not it's in, in its entirety, but oh, I for sure want to watch this in its entirety. I would buy. I would buy this show we're getting ready to talk about now, Justin. I would purchase. You this. loved well. You loved dinosaurs, like oh, as yes. creatures. Like you were obsessed with. Oh yes, dinosaurs. Yes. <laughs> so like the yes, the show dinosaurs mm-hmm. was an instant hit in our household. Honey, I'm home. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I loved it. Loved it. This was one of... Uh, actually, this was the first show to uh, the first new show mm-hmm. outside of Family Matters. Mm-hmm. So for the first couple of years, you know, you kind of had that lineup, with the exception of like a sort of a constantly rotating right, right. fourth. And there's really not enough. There really wasn't any show in there in that fourth slot to mention talking, like warrant talking about. Right. At least on this Nothing show, nothing lasted or, longer than a season. I'm sure. Not really. No. Yeah. Um. But Dinosaurs debuts in 1991 and is the first, like, new show. That sticks. 
that sticks. Yeah, a fourth show. So we have two in two in nineteen ninety one. The next two shows we're going to talk about, which are oh. which were the first like outside of the original lineup, the first to debut as part of TGIF that were big hits. Now, and the first of those, yeah, is Dinosaurs. Okay, well, I have a I have a programming question then. Okay. Because I'm starting to see there's too many shows for four slots. Uh huh. What happened with TGIF? Did well, they move? I mean, st- did they stuff move? is getting yeah. Stuff is getting moved around. Okay. At one point, Perfect Strangers gets moved. Okay. Um. Well, because it's I like th- it only goes to ninety three, so it's like in its later seasons. Right by okay. this point, yeah. So probably not as popular as it once was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and Family Matters, you know, had had taken off and became uh-huh. way way bigger yeah. than Perfect, Perfect Strangers. Strangers. Yeah, right. But by like ninety one, I mean we're still by ninety one. We're at, Family Matters is kind of the lead in. Uh-huh. We're also seeing, you know, Full House is, um, sort of. Uh, the Full House gets moved, I believe. Okay. They try to do another experiment with Saturday nights called, like, I Love Saturdays, and it uh, failed. Oh, okay. Because they were getting too many hits. They were like, we got to spread them out. But then yes. they realized yeah. it wasn't necessarily a hit if they moved it to Saturday night. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, we see a lot of, uh, there's a lot of differentiation mm-hmm. in the schedules. Okay, yeah. So... You know, like and dinosaurs right here. starting in April. That's clearly a mid-season replacement uh-huh. for probably one of those failed shows. Well, it was actually, uh, I think, a mid-season replacement for Family Matters, but I think it was more obviously that's not a failed show. Oh. It was like a ske- like a scheduling thing. I gotcha. I but gotcha. then, sort of by the fall of '91, um, you had the uh, the three big shows. Well, okay, so you had Family Matters, mm-hmm. and you had. The other new show we're going to talk about, step by step. Step you, by step. Basically, you basically you have them. They're not necessarily these shows aren't getting canceled necessarily. I think they're just trying to freshen up. Okay, the, so they're moving things the around. The lineup. I got. You. So they're moving things around. So it's like yeah, Perfect Strangers is on the air till ninety three. Full House is on the air till like ninety five. Right. Um, and it's always and stuff gets shuffled back in. Okay. So it's like Full House will not be on the lineup, and then it'll come back. Yeah. And so it's very hard to kind, kind of like of when get they an idea when they changed Coke. And then they brought it back, and it was new Coke. They were just trying to, they were just trying to garner some more, like drum up some more excitement yes. for Full House. They'd like withhold Full House, and then they'd bring right. it back. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, I see what they're so doing. So we're starting to see sort of this. Okay, so you had this sort of first generation of TGIF, mm-hmm. Full House, Family Matters, Perfect Strangers. Yeah, you start to see kind of the phasing out. Family Matters is now the big hit. Yes. Right, so Family Matters is now, we're in like 91, Family Matters is now the lead-in. Yeah. Um, That's the big show, that's the one we're, you know, really pushing Mm -hmm. hard. And then we're using the popularity of that to debut new shows. Yes. Um, You you always have, you look at the fourth fourth episode slot here, and, well, you you, you do have some stuff that sticks later on, but early on. um, What are are some early on? Some of the shows? Yeah. Okay, well, we talked about Free Spirit, Just the Ten of Us. I won't say Just the Ten of Us was a failure. That actually uh, ran for, like, three seasons. Really? But um, but not all on TGIF. Ah, uh, okay. Right. Uh, Baby Talk? That was like a Look Who's Talking type I was going to say, was that what yeah, they were trying to Yeah, I think make... it was kind of based on Look Who's Talking. Okay. Um, Billy? Which is uh, had Billy Connolly in it. I don't remember that at all. Nope. Um... Camp Wilder? I don't know what that is. I bet my good friend Ashley remembers a lot of these shows because she okay, is a okay. TV nut. Or not, maybe well, doesn't see, by remember. Like 90, by but like 93, 94, with. we start to get more successful shows sure. show up in that fourth slot, like Hanging with Mr. Cooper. Uh-huh. Which is not one of the shows we've dedicated a talk no, to No, but today, honestly, but just because I never really watched much of it. Yeah. So I but it was a big hit. I watched some of it, but yeah, it was. But I want to talk about Dinosaurs. Yeah, let's get back to let's, let's get back to dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Let's go way, way back, like way to, back to to prehistoric times. Yes, to the year. What is this? Nineteen ninety one A.D. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nineteen ninety one no. A.D. in April, dinosaurs so di- premieres. 
Dinosaurs is a live action um, show with animatronics. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have never seen it, please go watch Dinosaurs. It's so good. Uh, it was uh, the brainchild of the wonderful uh, Jim Henson. Maybe who... one of the purest people. He's up there with like Mr. Rogers on like purity yes. level. And yes, like and Bob Ross. The, and... Yeah, and the joy that he's brought. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was actually one of the last projects he worked on mm -hmm. uh, until his death. He died in 1990. Yeah. Um, so he, he was working on this, um, you know, in mm -hmm. the final months of his life. Yeah. Um, so it's a live action sitcom about a family of anthropomorphic dinosaurs um, that are like a, they use a combination of puppets, puppets and animatronics, much like the, you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. I would have loved to have been in the pit, in the company. room for that pitch. Just like, we see you've got. Uh, -huh. uh these these family shows um you've got your full house you've got your yeah. family matters what yep. you're missing is a show about dinosaurs well yeah that, that, that <laughs> is kind of the big ones right it's like you know you have your sitcoms you have all right the there's too many know, humans in this line the, the working class family yeah um you know you've got all the young kids that you know mm -hmm. full house has lots of the young kids the blended the, the family the buddy, the blended family, yeah. the working class family, yeah. that's family matters. Yeah. You've got uh, the buddy the comedy, perfect strangers, perfect strangers yeah. and dinosaurs. Those are the big ones. Well, the, yeah, those are, and to this those day. Those are your big categories, and to this day. <laughs> so dinosaurs is set in the year 63 million and three BC <laughs> uh, in Pangaea. Yep, still Pangaea. Still Pangaea. Um, and it centers around the Sinclair family. There is Earl, the mm -hmm. dad, who works as um, basically with the dinosaur equivalent of like a lumberjack. Mm -hmm. He pushes trees over. Yeah. Uh, for a he living. He is a Stegosaurus. Is that right? Are oh, you going to ask me what dinosaurs they are? I don't know what dinosaurs they are. Justin. Yes, you do. I, no, I don't. I don't. I feel like you do. I don't, and I don't want to talk about I it. I think he's a Stegosaurus. <laughs> Earl and Fran, his wife. Played, and voiced they're... by the wonderful Jessica Walter. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. Love Jessica Walter. Uh, they have three kids, uh, two kind of teenage kids. Uh, there mm -hmm. is Robbie and Charlene, mm -hmm. brother and sister, who yep. are kind of teenage. Yeah. And then you have Baby Sinclair. Baby. And Baby Sinclair, who who was kind of a breakout star. Yes, he was the own. Urkel of the show. He was the Urkel. <laughs> but this show didn't go on long enough for it to become strictly the Baby Sinclair show. No. And thank uh, God for that. Famous, you know, for his, his catchphrase, not the mama. Not the mama. Not he the mama. He was very into and mama. He would beat up his dad a lot. Yeah. He'd smash very him with funny. pots and pans. Great. And it was wonderful. It was great. And he's so funny. And, uh, <laughs> and, and he this, is not the same color. All the other dinosaurs are green. Am I right? Well, he's yes. Like a... I think it's just because he's a baby and he hasn't, you know. Oh, he you know has... how sometimes, like, you know, a baby will have, like, blonde hair and then it gets darker as they get older. Okay. Or you know? There's, okay. I feel like it's kind of like that. Oh, okay. You know? Okay. That's, he's that's not gotten his green yet. He's not. Right. He'll get there. Okay. Okay. You know, you get, you get that when you hit a certain age. He, sure. He's just a baby. It's a rite of passage. Yeah. Okay. For, for, for dinosaur babies. <laughs> you get your green. You know um, about the dinosaur babies colorization but you don't know which kind of dinosaur well i was making it up so oh okay okay yeah fair fair i could make up all the dinosaur types you want fran's a diplodocus i don't know that sounded sexual let's move on um when we I talk about dinosaurs show. i love 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 loved this show yeah I, I, could you I hear, heard that could cat. You hear <laughs> All of our listeners just it's, heard the cat too. Yeah, it's dinner time um, oh, in our okay. household, and so one of my cats is sitting at the edge of the couch, just very alert, staring at me for any movement that I might make to get up off the couch and feed her. Right, um, and it's not going to happen because I'm podcasting. So, um, do you want to talk about the finale? Of dinosaurs. Yeah, so dinosaurs only ran for four seasons, mm -hmm. which is uh, impressive. Considering, you know, I feel like a lot of people fondly remember dinosaurs, yes. and you know, it wasn't a giant like kind of cultural touchstone, mm -hmm. but I mean, people remember this show. Oh yeah, um, and remember it fondly. It ran for four seasons. There's 65 episodes yeah. of it, and it's been released on home video yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. So, so you know, and it has been Disney readily Plus available. Now. It's it on, is Disney on Disney Plus. Plus. So, yeah, um, the finale. 
is really something else. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you have never seen the finale, it's uh, extremely dark. I think there was um, only one way to end it, and it was that, though, right? Yeah, I mean, like yes. I, like, if you have a show about dinosaurs, I feel like you got. How did end it, it end? For, how did it end for all the dinosaurs? You know, right? Well, yeah. It basically <laughs> it ends with the, an environmental message about you know, <laughs> essentially the the. <laughs> The rich dinosaurs uh, destroying the planet yep. for their own uh, financial gain. Yep. And in the process, uh, killing everyone. Um, <laughs> basically ends with the... Just as important with, with now a, as it was in 1994. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it essentially ends with uh, a nuclear winter. Yeah. Where we um, sort of leave the family knowing that um, they're all getting they're, ready to die. They're all getting ready to die. Like, it's dark it's very dark uh, i love it it's 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 really an exceptional tv show it's very funny it is and, and very, i i feel uh, like the, the writers, satire is uh, yeah the satire is spot just on. like with any jim henson creation and i know that you know he was he was gone unfortunately by the time it, it came on tv mm -hmm. but i mean all jim henson projects is just so funny and witty yeah and the satire is just so spot on yeah and, and it's always like just as enjoyable for adults as it is children like yes, there's so, you and there's know. often just some very, very good messaging. Yes, in in you know the Muppets, uh, Sesame Street, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is no exception. Um, yes, basically, it ends with an environmental message um, in which they all die. Yep. Um, because that is what happened to all the dinosaurs, obviously. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, on that note, <laughs> let's talk about Tell step us. by step. <laughs> let's talk about step by step. a whole lot frankly to say about step by step step by step is kind of a brady bunch clone it is it is it's and a modern day brady bunch yes uh and it was basically created as a vehicle for suzanne summers and patrick duffy oh um, okay yeah uh, so you know two people who you know were most famous who were kind of veterans at that point yeah. they had kind of first come into fame in the 70s and 80s what now i know suzanne summers of course was like on three's company um what was patrick duffy's big thing like what was he kind of known for wasn't he in... Was he uh, Dallas? Yeah, I think he was Dallas, right? Okay, okay. Not, Didn't he do the, the whole... I... Yeah, he played uh, Bobby Ewing in Dallas. The whole thing where the whole season's like a a dream and yeah. she like wakes up and he's like in the shower and you thought he had died. Oh. And she, do you remember that? Even I've seen oh, that. Like, okay. Where she like wakes up and like hears him in the shower and goes in and he's in there and like... It turns out like the whole season was a dream and he didn't die or oh. something like that. That was Patrick Duffy. Okay. Now he wasn't JR. I know who JR was. JR no. got shot and he did for real die. Like in real life? No, the character. <laughs> <laughs> no, the character. Yes. Okay. Uh, God, step by step ran for every two, seven seasons, 150 episodes. Man, this I didn't is realize one it ran that long. In its later season, in fact, Family Matters. And step by step, in 1997, both moved to CBS, and what? where they both had one final season and were canceled. That's weird. Yeah, I guess because they had these new shows and they were changing their tone a yeah. bit, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, that's interesting. I uh, I didn't realize that. I enjoyed Step by Step, but I never liked it as much as. Family Matters or Full House. The sure. kids on Step by Step, there were some real like... It, Step by Step almost seemed like a combination of one of those shows and like Roseanne. Where like some of the kids were like smart mouth a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Like they were kind of a little, uh -huh. a little bit edgier, but not really. But it was right. still like family friendly. Now, does Step by Step have the best theme song? They all have really good theme songs. Oh, they're all good. Yes. But like step by steps gets stuck in my head, and like the the oh, the credits where they're at the theme park, and like the, mm -hmm. the click 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 of the the, of roller, the roller coaster, coaster and then falling down, and they're like eating can cotton candy, and yeah, 
I, I read a I read a uh, fun little bit of trivia uh-huh. actually about the opening credits to Step by Step. Really? So you you know the whole thing is like they're on that big lake. It's like uh-huh. you get the you get the big aerial shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know of the theme park and there's the lake. It's yeah. like right on the lake. Mm-hmm. That whole thing. Apparently, that theme park where they filmed that is not at all near a body of water, and that lake was like CG'd in. What? <laughs> yeah, what? isn't that weird? That is weird. <laughs> Would have never. Now I have to go back and watch it to, and see to if I can tell. The, see if I can tell how fake the lake is. That is interesting. Old fake lake. Old fake lake. God. Well, yeah, we don't I have, want a, we don't have to... a ton to talk about with step by step. But I want you to talk about the next two because you, I know you're going to have a lot to talk about. I am. The, the, these are some big heavy hitters. Yeah. The mid '90s saw. Yeah, sort of this new generation of TGIF come along. We're seeing the kind of retiring of the old guard of these shows, even to the extent that, like, you know, Family Matters has kind of passed its prime. Right. These you know, were, at this point. These, yeah, we're getting to the end. Um, we know it's been a long episode, but hopefully you'll stick in with us, stick with us so that we can talk about the next two episodes, or the next two shows. Um, and the first one is Boy Meets World. I think a lot of you all, if you're close in age to Justin and I, um, are probably fans of Boy Meets World, probably watched it religiously growing up, both on TGIF and in syndication. Um, This started in September of 1993, ran for seven seasons, 158 episodes. Um, This starts when our protagonist, Corey Matthews, is in sixth grade and follows him through high school and college uh so yeah. it's it's on for a while and um you've got Corey, who comes from just this very like normal pretty normal family living outside of philadelphia uh he's got his mom his dad he's got a goofy older brother eric he's got a younger sister um but most importantly he has a best friend named sean and yeah. he's got a bit of a crush on this really weird girl at school named topanga uh and weird name name. um and you and she's supposed to be kind of like like her parents were definitely like hippies you know and just kind of like named her something weird and and topanga is much like more off the wall in that first season or two and then they really like normalize her a lot um but yeah this was this was a great show um and i think this show did a really good job of like like it tackled a lot of issues that teens had in a way that was um less corny than like full house might do with like dj or something like that um right this was this and the next show more realistic a little more realistic like you know you it, it it deals with a lot of heavier topics um particularly like with the character of sean who really comes from like a really bad household and uh, a lot of things happen with his character um over the course of the show and yeah it was i mean it wasn't without his comedy i mean it was obviously a comedy but they they did the drama really well on the show in a way that i think really um hit home with a lot of people our age um and yeah it was just it was it was a ton of fun i love boy meets world you loved boy meets world right oh yes yeah yeah um, Boy Meets World is one of those shows I'm almost afraid to go back and watch because I'm afraid I won't like it as much as I did when I was younger. I don't think that's true. I don't I think, think it I is think, either, but yeah. I've been afraid. I think it, I think, I haven't watched the originals in quite a while, Yeah, but I feel like it would hold up. Yeah. I really okay. do. Yeah. 
This one, uh, this also had a spinoff pretty recently. In 2014, they did Girl Meets World, which is Corey and Topanga's daughter. Spoiler alert, yeah. Corey and Topanga get together. I never watched any of it. I didn't either. Um, it was ran on the Disney Channel uh, for three years, and uh, Sean was in it. I mean, you think you had, like, all the, all the original cast members came back for a period of time. Um, I mean, Corey Topanga and Sean, I think, were main characters, though. Uh, and it follows their daughter, and uh, and I mean I heard a lot of people liked it. It was it was good. I just I intended to watch it, and I just kind of never did. I don't think I mean I don't think it would hold the same appeal to me as Boy Meets World did. You know, sure. But yeah, I don't know. What is there to say about Boy Meets World? It's great. It's very wholesome. Oh, and of course, Mr. Feeney, um, who yes. is their teacher. From sixth grade, somehow also into college. Like, there's part of the joke is like he keeps kind of following them. They can't get away from him. Um, and he's just this older guy who is also Corey's neighbor. And um, a lot of heartfelt life lessons and moments mm-hmm. with Mr. He's Feeney. kind of a mentor. He's very much a mentor and has always kind of been there for Corey uh, and for Sean and Topanga. Uh, the- just like how Danny Tanner. Yeah. America's dad. Mr. Feeney was America's teacher. He was America's teacher. Do yes. you remember the last, I don't know if it's the last scene. Yes, I do. I know I know the scene you're talking about. Tears. I know the scene you're talking about. Tears, yeah. Oh, big time tears. <laughs> I'm not going to cry. Yeah, it gave me chills just thinking about it, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, that show. Continues. We're doing a Boy Meets World episode, so oh, it, it's, it's hard to... It's it's uh, it's hard to be like okay how much of this can we talk about because yeah. like that's something we're very clearly going to do an episode right obviously uh, and real quick I'll go over our last show that we want to highlight um, and this was Sabrina the Teenage Witch. This is so not me. Yeah. I love Sabrina. Um, I loved it at the time. And Scott, my husband, and I rewatched it last year. Because, I mean, I'd never seen all of it. I mean, I would just see, like, episodes. Did you here. watch all of it? Uh, we... Like, all the original show? Uh, yes. Except for we stopped in the last season. Because, I'll talk about it here in a minute, it actually changed from ABC Cancelled It. Yeah, after yeah. four seasons uh-huh. and it went to the WB for five, six yes. and seven and the tone changed and she went to college. But in that right. last season, the aunts Zelda and Hilda left and the story really suffered. <laughs> That's from right. that. Okay. So we actually did not watch the last season, but we watched six of the seven seasons. Um, okay. But yeah, this is obviously, this is about Sabrina. Um, Sabrina the Teenage Witch was an Archie comic from the 80s mm-hmm. um, that originally ran in the 80s. Um, so it's an Archie property. Um, and so they turned it into, they had actually like a TV movie first. They were kind of testing the waters, which had a very, very, very young Ryan Reynolds in it as, really? I believe, Harvey. Now, um, was it still... Uh, um... Melissa Joan Hart? Melissa Joan Hart yes. playing Sabrina. Yes. Who, of um, course, it was uh, almost like a, got her start on Clarissa. On Clarissa, exactly. It was almost like a pilot of sorts. Like, they were almost, yeah. like, testing the water. And then by the time they were like, oh, there's enough interest, like, she was, like, the only actor attached. You know? And so they mm-hmm. recast everybody else and made it the show and all this stuff. So, um, so, yeah, it's just about a 16-year-old girl who, on her 16th birthday, she finds out that she... And all the women in her family, including the two aunts that she lives with, are witches. Um, and the cat. And the cat. It's, Did I just say the cat as the cat meowed? Yes. June That's said, don't weird. forget about Salem. The dog. Don't forget about Salem. Don't the forget cat. about the cat. Salem, her cat, yeah, she realizes is actually this guy who was turned into a cat like uh, 200 years ago. And he is their pet. In the grand tradition of Hocus Pocus. Yes. Um... God. Which I feel like has to be a nod to Hocus Pocus, right? It has to be, yeah. Like, a guy got turned into a cat, and now he talks and yeah. makes witty little jokes yeah. and comments? Yeah, That's, Salem the yeah. cat is the best part of Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Agreed. Uh, 
He yes. is very observant. Very funny. <laughs> very, funny. <laughs> very funny. Very um, sassy. Very sassy. Very but sassy so, cat. So I feel like you see this shift from, not that these shows weren't family, Boy Meets World even more so about the family. Mm-hmm. You're shifting to more of like a teen viewership, I feel like. Or, well, and and you're not wrong about that because, and, and this, this actually was a conscious effort. I'm sure. Because in September of 1995, uh, Disney bought the parent company that owned ABC. That's right. So Disney now owns ABC and began to reshape the network, yeah. including um, the kind of fading Friday night lineup. Yeah. Okay, so that makes total sense. So Disney, I was wondering when Disney came in and kind of bought ABC. Uh, 95 is when the, the the deal went down, but we don't really start seeing their influence until like 96, 97, where they kind of start coming in to reshape things. Yeah. Um, like step by step and hanging with Mr. Cooper, both like put on hiatus. Uh-huh. Um, this is when, uh, so Sabrina, they launched two new shows, okay. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, which mm-hmm. obviously, obviously becomes a hit. Yes. And a Clueless TV show, which yeah. does not. Uh, and uh, is canceled, is like, in the first season. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that, that movie was a blockbuster. I mean, it, it, yes. and it's not just like, oh, it's a classic now. Like, it did great then. Yeah. Um, so that so, is weird. So, so Boy Meets World is a huge hit mm-hmm. at this point. Yep. Sabrina is their biggest hit since Boy Meets World. Yeah. Boy Meets World does um, this thing where I think it starts out, because he's so young, it starts out as much more family and friendship, and, becomes like a teen and it show. becomes more of a teen as he show. becomes a teen. Yeah, and certainly like when they go to college, and then they add in like you've got Matthew Lawrence and some other people, yeah, and it becomes yeah. much more like Eric's at the school, and like you don't see the parents very much at all. Like I mean, you wouldn't right. they're in college, so right. that kind of changes with the times, like as Corey grows up. Yeah, but every other new show um, that they attempt basically just fails. Yeah, um, there's a uh, so this is what I thought was surprising too. There's an Olsen twins vehicle called Two of a Kind. Love Two of a Kind. Uh, and that had that like two fails. seasons and it failed. Yeah. yeah. Um, that didn't last too long. Um, yeah. Family Matters and Step by Step end up getting picked up by CBS for final seasons, and then hmm. they both get canceled again. Interesting. Um, so we're seeing kind of the, I mean, the phasing out. It's sort of kind of naturally. Yeah. I think coming to an end here, yeah. uh, the final night of new programming for the original TGIF mm-hmm. was May 5th, 2000. Wow. So it really, really was a product of the 90s. It literally debuted September 89 and ended May 2000. Yeah. I mean, like, it was it, like, like all of the 90s. And it then... started the 90s and ended when the 90s were over. Wow. Uh, the, final, uh, the final night yeah. of TGIF featured the one-hour series finale of Boy Meets World. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as the ABC finale of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, right. which you already mentioned, was picked up by the w- WB for more seasons. three more seasons. But they yeah. sort of build this as the ABC finale. Yes. So well, it was and sort it of is, treated as a finale. It is, seasons one through four is high school Sabrina. And season right. five is when she goes to college. And so much like Boy Meets World, there's a shift. They still keep like Zelda and Hilda in, but they shift it and like they buy a coffee shop and you go from like the high school to like the coffee shop is the new hang right. and like they retool it. There's different opening credits. Okay. I remember the <laughs> the new credits actually are great and it's like I think she goes it's in Massachusetts and she goes to school in Boston. So it's like Sabrina like dancing really terribly. I mean, they uh-huh. think it's good. It is terrible right. dancing. Like all over Boston and like she like turns into like another Sabrina in a different outfit who's in a different part of Boston. Great. Great credits. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so so the original TGIF dies in two thousand. Um and you do have a couple of other attempts, right? To kind of yeah, relive so the magic. A, you have a second attempt, uh, which starts in two thousand three mm-hmm. um with the TGIF branding. Yeah. Um, and this lasts for two years until 2005. And, and, and we get shows like uh, George Lopez, mm-hmm. uh, Life with Bonnie, Hope yeah. and Faith, Eight Simple Rules. Now, um, like George Lopez, that ran for longer than two years. It just wasn't in TGIF. Oh, yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. 
yeah, I never could to, get a lot into of these that TG, show. A lot of these TGIF shows also ran in other times. Like they weren't. Sure, they some were of them just, were TGIF exclusive, uh-huh. but most of them are not. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then you also had an attempt a couple years ago, really, um, to to rebrand in 2018. Um, huh. Very for like a year, ABC started using the TGIF branding again. Wow! Um, and featured uh, fresh off the boat. Uh, they weren't even all fa- they weren't even all family comedies though, which is weird. It, so it features fresh off the boat uh-huh. and speechless, and yeah. then a game show called Child Support. Weird. Um, but they still branded it as TGIF. Um, but it only really lasted a year because by September of 2019 they had dropped the branding again and that's wow. kind of where we're at like we yeah. haven't had a real resurgence of it i don't um, think you had kind of a resurgence there in the 2000s briefly but um not really like it's I kind don't of think uh, there's a i don't think there's a place for a friday night place programming block anymore i just don't think that no for families for families i just don't think that exists anymore i i, I, I agree i, I yeah. think it's just it's a it's a sign of just changing times yeah and, I don't think a, a programming block of family sitcoms on Friday night no. is now any any other week night. I mean, they had Modern Family for years and years on Wednesday. Well, sure. I mean, yeah. I mean, there are plenty of plenty of comedies and right. comedy blocks on TV. It's just, I just not I don't Friday think night. The TGIF night. specific, like trying to make that happen on a Friday. Yeah, I just it was just think. sort of a different generation. It was. There's a lot of different stuff to do now. And yes different things that kids in particular you know maybe adults. with the pandemic it's a good time to bring it back because we're all home we are all home a lot so yeah. maybe it's time to bring it back let's give it another go yeah thank goodness it's funny <laughs> thank goodness thank goodness it's funny put the god back in tgif <laughs> Well, guys, this episode has been very long, I know. I hope that you have stuck around to the end. I have had so much fun talking about yes. TGIF. Um, once really, again, I've been looking forward to this one. For once a while. again, um, this one's for Bob. and uh, This is for Bob. This yes. is for Bob. And uh, I think tonight I should watch an episode of Full House in his honor or Dirty Work. Um, Please watch Dirty Work. <laughs> you could do both. I could. I could. Yeah. I contain multitudes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I can't wait, frankly, to do a like a deep dive, fleshed out episode on all of the shows yep. that we've talked about today. Um, yes, yes, yes. So obviously on social media, uh, please let us know your favorite um, TGIF shows. And that's going to lead me to the, the final thing I want to discuss before we sign off, Justin. And that is, what was your favorite? TGIF show, and then I'll give you mine. You can only choose it's, one. It's between two. All right. It's between two. It's either Perfect Strangers or Dinosaurs. I'll I think Dinosaurs. That. I think Dinosaurs is probably the better show. Yeah. Perfect. I just have a lot of nostalgia for Perfect. Perfect Strangers, Strangers is your favorite TGIF show starring humans, and yeah. <laughs> Dinosaurs is your favorite TGIF show starring dinosaurs. Starring dinosaurs. Yes. Different categories. Yeah. I'll give you that. Yeah. I'll What's your you favorite? That. You know what? I think I'm going to say Boy Meets World. I think really? I have the most nostalgia for Boy Meets World. Okay. Um, and it, you know, some of those shows started when I was still really little, like yeah. one, two years old. So I was watching them a lot in syndication, but like Boy Meets World, you know, I was like, what, six when that started, seven. So like, I feel like I watched a lot more of that. As it was airing, I remember when the finale aired; like it was a big deal. Um, sure. So I think I think I'd have to say Boy Meets World. I'll, I mean, it, that's a hard choice. You really can't go wrong with any of them. You really can't go wrong with any of them. Honestly, I there's not a wrong agree. answer. I agree; they're all great. I really also love Full House and Sabrina. So yeah, I mean, if we're talking late '90s, early 2000s fashion alone, Sabrina wins hands down. My God, uh-huh. an icon for us all. Um, but if we're talking about a show, I think maybe I'll go with Boy Meets World. Okay. And now I feel excellent, like I should watch excellent it. Excellent choice. Probably. See. Now our good I think friend, it'll I think it'll hold up. I think it will hold up. Our good friend and dedicated listener Katie, I know, has watched Boy Meets World in recent years, and she's she has loved it. And I told her the same thing. I said I'm scared to watch it. I have so much nostalgia for it. Like, what if it's not good? Or what if like? But she said it's still great. So I trust her. Well, you, I trust well, you, Katie. You well, you want to uh, do some some plugs for some <clears throat> stuff? 
man, if you are on social media, give us a follow. Hang out with us. We have a lot of fun on Instagram we and sure at Twitter, do. at Cool Kids Club Pod. Uh, we are also on Facebook. Uh, just search for Cool Kids Club Podcast. Yeah. Um, I am on Instagram and Twitter at Lousy with Ghosts. If you would like to follow me for fake pictures of toys mm-hmm. and movies mostly. Uh, <laughs> and you you have another podcast. I do. Uh, the occasional wrestling podcast, Blue Bard Cage. You can check it out wherever you found this podcast. And I am on social media on Instagram and Twitter at Amy Reads TN. And again, my name is spelled A I M E E. I also have a YouTube channel of the same name, Amy Reads, where I read books and I talk about them. So if any of that sounds interesting, uh, and it's mostly just like pictures of cats and an occasional selfie over on my Instagram. So, and promoting Cool Kids Club stuff. Yep. Uh, I also want to say uh, thank you to Brian Wakefield for our theme song. Check out him and his uh, various projects at brianwakefieldmusic.com. Yes. Um, Yes, thank you, Brian. And thank Uh, you, you all, for listening. We hope that you had a wonderful New Year's and holiday season. And we hope that you are ready for another year full of Cool Kids Club content. (laughs) We a actually have seeds. a lot. We have a lot of stuff in the works we right do, now that we I, do. I don't want to talk about right now because it hasn't happened yet. But yeah. um, you know, we're gonna we're looking at expanding. We're looking at, at kind of uh, doing some more. Yeah. So uh, if you have been enjoying the show, um, you know, hang in there with us because uh, there's gonna be more to come. And and we're having so much fun doing this, and, and we hope you're having fun. Uh, yeah. Listening to it as well. Yeah. Well, thank you all so much, and until next time, Justin. Stay, stay cool. cool. Whatever happened to predictability? The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Everywhere you look, there's a heart, there's a heart. I hand the whole on to you. Everywhere you look, there's a face of somebody who needs you. Thank you.